you want to go on this one? Short trampoline. There are raft is in the raft. It's a stand up paddleboard. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so where's the uh this? Actually a real shower. Yeah, it's actually a real shower. Yeah. Nice. 
Plywood, but it's been coated. Actually, a fantastic spot. Good job, buddy. Oh, wait. Come down. And then we're going to go back up. So we're going to let other people up. Okay. So, James, as soon as they're done, then you can go back upstairs, okay? There. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Outside. Okay. Oh, yeah. I will. You want to buy fish in the tank? So if you were to catch any fish while you're out at sea, you can put them in there. Go see Daddy. Go find Dad. See him? Go see Dad. Can I ask you the big question? What are the price points? Uh, that I don't know. Do you know that? Just uh, roughly. Just 1.2. 1.2? Oh, that's fully equipped or is that your base price? Can you sit down and put your shoes on, please? So welcome to our fourth review. Um, we just saw the video that we took as we walked around the boat. Uh, but this is actually a kind of a difficult boat to review for a couple of different reasons. The first of which, unless you actually buy the boat that we just walked around, you're never going to see one like it again. Uh, these are highly customized boats. Uh, everything on the interior is chosen by the owner who purchases the boat. Uh, colors, wood finishes, floor finishes, uh, tiles, backsplashes, even the arrangement of the beds, beds cabinets, <laughs> furniture, countertops, yeah. the galley can be wherever you want to put it. Um, they say you can have whatever you want so long as it doesn't compromise the structural integrity of the hull. Mm -hmm. These are hyper customized. Um, and you know, we've looked at a few reviews and talked to, um, people about it and, and you Every every video you look at, the boats are different different colors, and they mm -hmm. say the same. Oh, we we prefer the one last year with the different colors, and um, and then to to top it off, um, the boat that we looked at now, uh, even the hull is going to be different if you buy one now. <laughs> so the <laughs> one that was on display is an older model, mm -hmm. um, and they've they've released a new um, uh, hull mold uh, with some nicer, bigger windows and a more modern hull design. Doesn't look like it's from the from the nineties anymore. Um, <laughs> but we'll review the one we did see <laughs> and we can talk <laughs> about, we can talk to <laughs> and we can talk about what's going on because in general the boat's not changing from a uh, size or performance perspective it's mostly a cosmetic change and then again a lot of the interior cosmetics it's whatever you want it to look like mm -hmm. but i guess we could say from a an aftermarket perspective which is probably where we would be coming out a boat like this um it would be useful to look at what this looks like and the different kind of uh, arrangements that you might see if you found one on the used market. Right. 
Yeah, there's lots of different layouts for this boat. Right. So one of the reasons why we'd be looking at that, we'll jump right into it now, uh, as a used boat is the price. So this is by far the most expensive boat. It's also the largest boat that we've yeah. we've toured through, um, but a very expensive boat from, from our perspective. Mm -hmm. So uh, the price for this boat is about $1.2 million delivered to the East Coast, um, which sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, but I did a bunch of research to just to try, try and compare, is this a good deal or is it not a good deal? Mm -hmm. um, but that $1.2 million price is absolutely, totally all-inclusive, including a, a tender and a motor for the tender, and every fathomable option that you could put on the boat, water makers, uh, dive tank compressors, it's all included. So, so well, okay, that, that makes a big difference, because when you look at the options list, like even on the naughty text that we were just wanting... Uh, reviewing. I wanted to go through the Naughty Tech 46 option list, but it was like three or four pages long. Um, so I said, uh, forget it, we'll, we'll get into it some other time. Uh, so what I do is I wanted to know what, what this price looked like on another boat. So the closest things that I could find, um, well, to compare price, I wanted to compare to something that was more like the Naughty Tech. So I found the closest thing I could find in a production boat was actually the Bali 5.3. Mm -hmm. So it's a 50 foot uh, catamaran that can be configured with a similar number of bedrooms. So uh, the Royal Cape uh, Majestic 530 can have up to six berths in it. And so can the 5.4 Bali. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's fairly similar in size and, and weight, etc. cetera. Um, but clearly more targeted towards a, a charter business, whereas the Majestic 530 is clearly targeted at a liverboard, probably just a couple even, uh, or maybe a, a, a small family. So when we look at the the, um, the Bali, I think I pulled up. Now th these prices are a little bit older. The, ha the price sheet I happened to find was from 2017, um, but I don't think the prices have changed too dramatically from then. And I'll go through this on the on the screen with you, but um, you know the base price sounds pretty good at six hundred eighty-five thousand euros. Mm -hmm. So you think, oh wow, that's that's like half the price of the Majestic Five Thirty. Uh, but then when you add in some of the options and things that you you have to put in because <laughs> it, it's almost not saleable. So their their pack specifications is another almost sixty thousand euros. Um, and then I went through the price list and just pulled out all the things that I, I thought were, you know, included or sounded like they were included on the Majestic 530. And lo and behold, we come up with a price of about 1.125 million uh, with it actually fitted out like the Majestic 530. And that doesn't include delivery to the East Coast. So probably 1.2 million delivered to the East Coast. So they're about the same price. <laughs> and the Majestic 530, you get set up exactly how you want it, mm -hmm. colors, arrangements, uh, dishes, silverware, pots and pans, I think, even come with the, with the boat. Mm -hmm. So that $1.2 million price doesn't sound so bad after you actually dig through an options list for something that's comparable to this boat. Now, it, was a, it is a big boat. It's 53 feet overall, 50 feet on the water, voluminous inside. You know, yeah. we, we saw in the video there just mm -hmm. this corridor after corridor, uh, Yep. Even the deck was big, so even moving forward from the from the cockpit area and the outdoor salon, you had like two and a half feet of deck Easily. space there at least. And when you so, get way up front, the hull yeah. seemed to get really wide just in front of the ca uh, the, the salon. Yep. I mean, there must have been almost three to four feet wide of weather deck there. Um, smaller trampolines up front. Yeah, um, shorter trampolines. Um, but they were there. They weren't the standard kind of tied trampoline. They were that plastic woven. Yeah, the mesh canvas, I kind of call it. It's, yeah. It's a single single sheet that has like holes punched in it. Yep. But the nice thing, excuse me, the nice thing about those is that they don't give and they're they're very stable and sturdy when right. you stand on them. You don't sink and squash in them. Yep. Uh, so I didn't mind that. Uh, huge storage compartments. Yep. There's two to each side of the anchor windlass. Uh, the anchor windlass is inside a flip top cover. Mm -hmm. The buttons are in there, but those are only when you're actually doing it manual. The boat comes with a handheld remote uh, that allows you to do a lot of things, uh, but the, the two basic functions that you get on the handheld remote are the anchor windlass, so you could even be out back or up front, doesn't matter where, 
but also the big platform on the back, the mm -hmm. hydraulic uh, swim slash davit dinghy mm -hmm. lift um, is also on that control and that goes up and down. Uh, the, the fellow that uh, showed it to us said it would go down deep enough that you'd almost be waist deep. So plenty, plenty deep enough for the outboard motor to, mm -hmm. to drive right up onto the, onto the deck and then mm -hmm. lift your whole dinghy right out of the water. Um, back to the inside, the, the, the volume, um, remember we were walking around there, we were saying, wow, there are a lot of rooms, mm -hmm. a lot of rooms and just hallway after hallway. Yeah. So the version that we happened to be on at the Annapolis boat show was a five bed, uh, vessel with, I think five heads as well. I think, I think there was so. a head per, per room, mm -hmm. um, very different layouts. Um, the master cabin in this as well had a bathtub. So way in the front of that pontoon, there was a bathtub with another little uh, window out <laughs> towards the inside of the pontoons. Yeah, it was a safety window, but it was a yep. nice functional window, too, because it let a lot of light in the cabin. You could look yep. right out underneath the, the bridge deck while you were sailing, what, yep. if you're taking a shower in there. Yep. I didn't like that the... So the, the master bed, and as well as one of the other beds on mm -hmm. the guest side are a thwart ship. They're sideways. Yep. Um, and to do that the head of the bed has to get up high up into the bridge deck. Yep. So it means you got to walk up a set of stairs to get to the master bed. Mm -hmm. um, and at our age, that wouldn't be such a big deal. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't much care. Right. But I could see an older couple, you know, when they're certainly getting tired knees and things, mm -hmm. not wanting to amble up. I mean, that, that bed's probably almost chest height for almost, me and I'm yep. six feet tall. Um, so it's a, it's a climb up to get onto that bed. And none of these beds had a walk around. Most of them had a cutout at the foot of the bed. Yep. Um, again, because there were so many bedrooms and where they were situated and not being able to actually get up to the bed. Mm -hmm. um, it was hard to see if there were outlets for charging ports or anything like that near the beds. I know there were some around, like I'd seen some in the, like the bathrooms and things. But, but as we said before, you just tell them where you want them. Yeah. And they're going to do it. <laughs> it's uh, totally up to you where you want. They were even talking about um, if you didn't like the stair up to the master bed being in the middle, you could you could put the the drawers and a dresser type fixture mm -hmm. in the middle and have a stair on each side. You could, instead of having a king size bed, you could have a queen size bed and have a little walkway, so to speak, on one mm -hmm. side of the bed. Um, it was yeah. however you want it. So, but uh, I... I still remember walking through it thinking the boat kind of felt, at least our first walk through it, it yeah. felt huge, felt big, but it felt kind of cheesy, almost. It was... <laughs> I don't know it, if it's the dated hall style and some of the dated... I don't know. Did I you get that feeling? I don't know if I got the dated feeling as much. I mean, so they had the etched shower doors, so to me, that ages quickly. Um, I think they had like a seahorse on one and a turtle on another, you know, Maybe things that like that. Maybe that was part of it. Um, so you There's had kind of those of frosted and etched glass windows and doors. Some of it was pretty, but it definitely, yep. if it isn't already dated, probably would be looking dated soon. <laughs> but it just, I mean, it was nice to have the multiple bedrooms, especially if you're going to have, you have a large family mm -hmm. or you have a lot of people that you're going to be traveling with. Yep. But otherwise it just seems kind of jumbled. You've got three, three bedrooms and three bathrooms on one side, on the starboard side. And meandering. Yeah. You know, the, the master or owner's <clears throat> suite felt not as big as some of the other boats. Right. And that's because it shares it with another bed yeah. too. So there's another, there's another bed, another head over there. So again, you don't have that segregation that you have in a lot of the other cats where you have your owner's hull. So you have an entire hull to yourself where this well, one you don't. Granted, it is a much bigger boat. So this, this boat, even <laughs> though it had a bed in the back, that was just kind of a, a just in case, in case mm -hmm. they had extra visitors. It was actually configured deliberately as a workshop. Yeah. So if you, if you lifted up that mattress, there was a rubber uh, countertop, uh, like a workbench countertop. Mm -hmm. And, it, and apparently I've seen others that have the same tool closet in that room. Mm -hmm. uh, you open it up and there's a place to put a lot of tools in as well as underneath that bed. Mm -hmm. So I think in normal situations, this particular owner had this one configured so that it, it was the entire hull. Normally was the master owner's hull. Mm -hmm. um, but you had a, just in case the grandkids came over mm -hmm. bed that the you could put on top of the 
the workbench. But they also didn't have a door. So most of the other cabs that we've been on that have an owner's hull have some sort of a sliding door or mm -hmm. something to close off just to give you that privacy if you don't have anybody else down there with you. But there, were, but there were doors in the hallway. There were doors in the hallway. But if you want that cavernous owner's hull feeling yeah. by closing yourself off down in your own hull, you don't have that in this particular design. that excess, you know, you step down the companionway stairs and there's this room you know and it feels yeah. big it felt smaller in the even though there was lots of rooms in, in a lot of room yeah. it was broken up in the in yeah the it was room. just very segmented and yeah. again it's totally customizable this has just happened to be what this particular owner chose mm -hmm. so it wouldn't necessarily be what we would choose if we were to pick one um especially doing it brand new mm. um but again it's it, it wasn't a terrible vessel no but it had a lot of great features on it, it. and you could see the the draw you know, if we go, um, you know, back up, the the salon area was was yep. plenty big. Had a great kitchen. Um, didn't really have any fiddles on the on the countertop, but it's a pretty big boat anyway, so it's right. probably pretty stable in the water. But yep. it did have a full walk around island in it, yep. and you could be working anywhere and leaning against something as you're working. Right. Um, the, the seating area was nice. Mm -hmm. Had a big U shape seating area with, with wine racks which are customizable yep. i've seen some they're bigger some they're smaller yep. uh the guy on the boat said yeah they saw one that went out where that whole wall was a wine rack <laughs> so you go outside into the into the cockpit mm -hmm. and this gets back to what we were saying before about mm -hmm. a, a more intimate cozy feeling cockpit yeah. so it's still a pretty big cockpit there's two tables out there one yep. on each side yeah the big square table on the um port side of the boat mm -hmm actually is a chest freezer. So you lift Correct. the top up and there's yep. a chest freezer in there, which was really cool. Yep. There's a washer dryer out there. And I thought that was pretty innovative to put that up on the cockpit. Because yep. you're probably going to be folding your laundry and stuff outside where it's nice. <laughs> where it's not, especially if you're out in the tropical weather, it's going to be hot down there. And if you're going to be running the dryer, you don't want the heat from it in the, in the boat. Yep. Um, although it may help dry the boat out a little bit to run a dryer in Maybe. there. But if it's exhausting out. Yeah. Um, what else was that? There was a little refrigerator out there. There was a refrigerator. Uh, the particular model we were on also had a barbecue grill in the center, as yep. well as a cutting board, like kind of countertop area to the left, and then a sink with a live, yep, um, live well for live well bait for fish. bait fish. Um, and again, that that countertop kind of be, can be used as your fish cleaning station. Mm -hmm. So it made a lot of sense. Um, and again, your it was single. Um, Single helm. Yep. Single so raised helm. There were and there were two captain's chairs up there. Again, on this particular model, there were two captain's chairs up there, and on the other side, I think there was one captain's chair. Yeah, there was one pedestal chair yeah. on the other side that you could move around the back of the, the cabin. So there's a bunch of sockets, including yep. on the um, the uh, motorized swim platform. Yep. You could you could stick the seat back there. You could stick an umbrella back there. Yep. He said um, the the helm is up fairly high and has mm -hmm. great visibility if you're sitting or standing either nice. way the seats are adjustable up and down yep. the only thing i didn't like about it was the wheel was really low yes. like you're going to steer with your toes if you're sitting <laughs> in that seat yeah um like the it, top of the wheel was maybe a few inches above your knees if you were sitting in the where the seat was positioned which was so that you could see over all the instruments and everything else on that it, it the steering wheel was only maybe three or four inches. The top of it was only three or four inches over your knees. And we're not so. we're not short people. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm close to six, yep. and she's not far behind me. Yep. Uh, so I was I was reaching down trying to reach the wheel while seated in that seat. Uh, but that said, you know, you're probably going to use the autopilot a lot unless you're actively mm -hmm. sailing. If you're actively sailing, maybe you're standing mm -hmm. in, at the at the wheel. Um, certainly, if you're pulling lines and things, you're probably standing. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you probably tack, set your lines, trim your sail, mm -hmm. set your autopilot and get back in the chair and, yep. and drink your coffee. <laughs> yeah. I mean, other pluses with this too, and we didn't talk about it, we were inside, but the visibility and the windows and light on the inside of this boat were fantastic. Was, there was a lot of natural bright. light, very, very bright. The indoor portion of the salon had windows that opened as well, so you'd have that nice breeze coming in right off the bow. Um, in addition to that, out in the cockpit area, it had actual windows 
And there were windshield wipers as yep, they were well. Hard, hard glass hard windows, glass windows windshield with windshield wipers. wipers. Um, and, and they did have opened. vents as well. Yep. Yep. Those windows opened if you wanted them to. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I'm, I'm sure it's all options that this particular customer had requested. Um, but again, it was things that I didn't see on other boats mm-hmm. um, that I never thought about with, you know, again, that cross ventilation while you're in the cockpit, um, having the ability to just quickly open up one of those windows. Right. So... Yeah, um, really well well featured. Um, yep. I couldn't find any options lists, which is th- there's got to be some <laughs> options. It did mention some things in the brochures about the standard sails being uh, the uh, it's a Genoa, not a jib that it comes with, mm-hmm. and a full batten main. Um, so there there must be some options for things like code zeros and screechers and you know cruising spinnakers, things mm-hmm. like that for low wind. Because as we'll get into with the specs when I go through those, uh, the mast is actually really short on this, mm-hmm. and the sail area fairly small compared to other boats in this size and this class. Um, so I'll, I'll get into that in, in just a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I think before we go on to that, I just wanted to touch base on what other boats I could find that compare to this, because it certainly is nothing like mm-hmm. the other four, uh, three or four boats we reviewed. Three? Three. three. The other three boats we've reviewed already, <laughs> or even most of the other boats we saw at the yeah. show. Uh, yeah, it's a catamaran with two hulls, and uh, but it's, like I said, it's so it's customized, yeah. so full of stuff. Um, the only other boat at the show that I could find, and we didn't get a chance to go on it, was the mm-hmm. Exquisite X5. Yep. The Exquisite X5 is a similarly marketed uh, catamaran. It's mm-hmm. 1.4 million, and it's definitely more stylish. Uh, it's got a more modern and European almost look to it with a, an interesting uh, fiberglass arch over the rear, um, almost like a traveler arch pushed way back in you. As you come down the side decks, the weather decks, you, you duck under it to get into the cockpit. Um, I wish we had gotten a chance to take a look at that one. But that's a similar idea. Everything's included on that, on that boat. Uh, totally loaded. It's got some interesting uh, electronic control systems. Um, you know, control things from your smartphone kind of stuff. Uh, but that, like I said, that's 1.4 million versus 1.2. Uh, and the only other one that I saw that was fairly similar um, was the uh, Privilege. And the Privilege 510 that you can see on their website now is almost the same price. It's about 1.2 million um, and very well equipped at that price. Um, Totally different strategy of layouts in those. It's got a, a gigantic voluminous voluminous <laughs> master suite mm-hmm. in the front. Uh, that's the one that you know spans the whole width of the mm-hmm. hull. Yeah. But I had to duck the whole way across, right. even it's, on a fifty-something foot boat. It's maybe maybe five feet tall in there. I mean, even I at five six, I could stand yeah. up when my head was in the all the way front. Yeah. Where where there's a the walkover is. Yeah. Um, she could stand up. I couldn't. Right. Down in the halls, you could. So on one side is yep. your bathroom, and then the other side was your walk-in closet kind of stuff. Yeah, Down was... there, you could stand. Yep. Plenty of room. But actually, up and around the master bed, yeah, you were <laughs> you were crouching down. At least I was. Yep. Um, so, Specs on this. Yep. We'll go through Majestic the. Five we'll go through the spec list um, on screen, and what else would we like to talk about? That's it for the Majestic. I mean, the life raft was in a decent place as well on this one. I mean, very visible. Um, it was right up front over by the mast. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, again, easily accessible. And it was just covered with um, a canvas, you know, umbrella type of top to it. Yep. But, again, Automatically very- deployed. Yep. And, again, they'll put it anywhere you want it. That's where they right. normally put it. But if you want it on the transom, you can have it on the transom. <laughs> right. And there is, there, they did show another. They had a secondary life raft just to show that they could also have it on the transom. So mm-hmm. they did have that on the port side as well just to show where it would where it would fall. Yeah. Um, but. So it, it, interesting boat. Um, we're not close enough to, to making a purchase <laughs> to, to make any calls on it. So we're going to yeah. see something totally different when we go shopping at, at that point. So it's really difficult to say in the future, is this going to be one of the boats that we look at? Right. Maybe it will be. And again, because they're customized so much and to each person's request, mm-hmm. the you one may we never see. We may see. <laughs> <laughs> it, may, it may be checkerboard and uh, <laughs> who knows. Yeah. But 
as a boat overall, um, it would certainly be if it fell into our our category, and it might because I was mm -hmm. looking at some used prices, and probably because it is so customized, the price drops on these pretty mm -hmm. fast. I saw some 2015s, you know, offered up in the in the five to six hundred thousand dollars, and so they lost half of their value uh, pretty quickly. In a and couple years, it's probably because of those customizations. You know, we've got different color tile in every bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, the next owner is not going to necessarily like that. Right. You know, as we were looking at the other boats, you know, we were talking about how I have a, a an affinity towards the the European styles of the Bavarias and mm -hmm. the and the Benetos, and she kind of doesn't necessarily. So, at least mm -hmm. if you if you know your style, you can go and shop a <laughs> production boat and say, yeah, I like their stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> or I don't like their stuff. Yeah. Whereas with this one, you don't know what you're getting until you actually climb into the boat. Yeah. I gathered the specifications for the Majestic 530, the Bali 5.4, the Privilege Signature 510, and the Exquisite X5. You can see that the length overall, the boats are all fairly similar with the Bali 5.4 being just a two, two feet longer. Uh, the length on the water line, uh, we can see they're again almost the same size across the board with the exception of the Bali 5.4 again being just a bit longer. Uh, beam, we have kind of two groups. We have the Majestic 530 and the Bali 5.4 at 28 and a half, and then the Privilege and the Exquisite being a, a fair bit narrower at 26 and 26 and a quarter. Draft, the Majestic 530 uh, comes in very shallow compared to the other three, particularly against the Privilege, uh, allowing it to get into some shallower uh, bays and berths. Uh, displacement, we got a, a big jump in the Bali 5.4, this boat is quite a bit heavier, uh, 40,000 pounds for the rest of them and 52,000 pounds for the Bali 5.4. Uh, that's a big jump, but I believe the Bali 5.4 also comes with significant more uh, load carrying capacity. There's a fair diversity in sizes of sail area among these boats. Uh, we can see that the Majestic 530 uh, probably has the smallest combined, uh, although the privilege has a, a fairly small foresail as well as the exquisite. So the total area is probably not all that much different, but it does seem like it's a bit smaller on the on the 530 here. I didn't add these numbers together. Uh, some of this may be due to the mast heights. Uh, if we look at the mast height, we've going to get two groups. We've got the sort of 80 foot crowd with the Bali and the exquisite, and then the 70 foot crowd with the majestic and the privilege. Uh, I'm not certain. I was looking at the privilege document and it mentioned mast length. And now I'm wondering if that is a, a difference. Uh, most boats quote air draft, uh, so from, from waterline to top of mast, and I'm wondering if that's a difference that we're seeing in the Majestic and the Privilege versus the Bali and the Exquisite. Maybe, maybe not. I, I put here standard engines, so the standard engine in the Majestic 530 is a 75. Of course you can get 75 horsepower greater engines than the others, uh, and then the Exquisite comes with a, an 80 horse uh, package already. Water capacity varies quite a bit across the board. Uh, we've got a, a fairly large tank on the Bali 5.4 and a particularly small tank on the Privilege 510. Uh, fuel capacity is similar. Uh, quite a big tank on the Bali as well as the Majestic 530, uh, and then fairly small tanks on the Privilege and the Exquisite. Uh, given these water and fuel capacities, uh, we could see that the Majestic and the Bali probably would make better long passage uh, and longer time away from the slip uh, boats than the Privilege and the Exquisite X5. Uh, I also put in a bar graph of the same data on the next slide here. And this was just a, a visual representation. And if you look closely at the bottom, I've used a log graph that allows me to uh, get a 40 to 50,000 number on the same chart as a 4 or a 5 number. Uh, so this makes things on the right hand side uh, more exaggerated, and particularly when we look at differences. So if we see differences on the far right side of this chart, they are much bigger differences than if they were on the left side of the chart. Uh, this points out those differences in sail area as well as the displacement uh, difference between the boats. So I think we'll wrap that up. And um, if you like what you saw, please uh, hit like, subscribe, and share it with your friends or anybody else that you think like might like to see it. Um, and jump in the comments. We love to see comments. We've only mm -hmm. got a few here and there. Um, but we'd love a dialogue to see what you think. Tell us where we got wrong and, 
And uh, if you have one, tell us why you love it and, and why we should get one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.